most evil deceptions on paternity court. Just before your mother passed, she says to you, I thought I picked the right one for you, but David Dorsey is really your biological father. Yes, ma'am. So as I walked out the bathroom, he was laying on the couch. You know, I went up to him, I showed him the pregnancy test. He looked at me and he was like, it ain't mine, instantly. Because she's a cheater. <laughs> You're a cheater. It was a real life Who's the Daddy wedding special edition. The plaintiff had not one, but two potential candidates for the role of dad in her life, and she wanted to find out the truth. The defendants, however, were ready to fight otherwise. Miss Kelly, you are here to determine if one of two men we've tested for paternity is your biological father. You hope to leave this courtroom today knowing your father's identity so he can walk you down the aisle at your wedding. Yes, Your Honor. Moving on, Miss Kelly took us along her journey of finding out the truth. After a rough teenage years, she got to meet these possible fathers. While one of them was distant, Mr. Duncan welcomed her as his. A nice gesture. But he still had his doubts based upon the circumstance in which he met the baby mama. I might have had a little doubt because uh, at that time, she was living with a guy. Mm. She was living with a guy, but uh, she was a nice looking girl and I was a little bit old and maybe it might have been wrong, but uh, she was real pretty. And I was, I, I didn't look that bad myself back then. and. Uh, I'm trying to bring over to my side, but she's living with another guy. Mommy dearest, the perpetrator in all of this, came out with her truth. She did cherish her daughter and wanted her to find closure, as she was the one paying for her mistakes in the past. They both wanted Mr. Duncan to be their guy, but there was still a 50-50 chance of it going sideways. I was young when I had her, and I made some mistakes, and my mom wound up wanting to step to the plate and raise her. So my mom and my dad raised her, and like I said, when my dad got killed, it really disturbed her. She seen everything happen, so she started being rebellious towards my mom, and everything showed out in school and all, and I knew it was time. My mom never wanted her to know who her father was. Next up, the baby daddy stated his case. It seemed, after having a row of words with the father of the baby mama, the defendant ended up taking them in. Though he accepted Miss Destiny as his, the people certainly didn't make it easier. No. uh Me and Miss Kelly had spent some time together, and I took her and Destiny home. And I ain't gonna say what the words was, but they were no good words. Understood. So I told him, I said, well, um, I had my own house, I had my own land, I had a good job, I had a good car, and I wasn't that bad look. <laughs> That's you? <laughs> That's me right By the looks of it, it wasn't just the people who were giving the baby daddy trouble. The mommy dearest was a whole other trouble as well. Yup, the living arrangements didn't last long after that, and Mr. Duncan lost touch with the plaintiff. The same pain that she was going through by people saying this is your daddy and that's your dad and stuff like that. I went through the same pain of them telling me that that ain't my child. I know you don't know how it would feel for somebody to say that to you, but it really do hurt. Every time they say it, every time you hear it, I mean, it just breaks you down, but uh, I'm not sure that I'm her father. Hold on to your hats, people, because Miss Kelly's journey isn't over yet. Not at all as Mr. Anthony, the other potential baby daddy, was still very much in the picture. Now the daughter had an encounter with him as well, but it wasn't pleasant by the sound of it. Let's see. Do you remember the relationship with Mr. Anthony? Yes, Your Honor, it was not even what you want to call a relationship. It was a, we never seen each other again or nothing. So it was more of a one night stand? Yeah, pretty much. You never saw him again? No. I mean, I seen him as far as like around town or whatever, but it's But you never were intimate with him again? Relationship wise or nothing. Now, the question was, what were the hopes of these guys from today's results? The daughter hoped for a real father so he could finally meet his grandkids. Such a sweet sentiment. Though Mr. Anthony was initially shocked, the question was now nagging at him as he had been in the dark for so many years. True that. I know this man and I don't I don't have nothing against this man. If this is this man's daughter, then I'm proud for him to have his child because this, if you ever had a child and you were glad to have a child, this would be one up. So if this is his child, then I know, I know he'll be more than proud for her to be his daughter. All the pieces of this paternity puzzle were finally about to fall into place. The grand reveal was here. Let's see whether Miss Kelly gets to have a father to walk her down the aisle or not. Here we go. Mr. Duncan, you are not her father. How are you feeling? Confused, Dill. <laughs> That's understandable. 
This was a sizzling story of love, betrayal, and baby drama. The plaintiff claimed the baby daddy was okay with their first child, yet the second one was denied fatherly treatment. The defendant, on the other hand, claimed it to just be another ploy to entrap him. Mr. Johnson, you testify that the plaintiff is a liar and a cheater who knows you are not her child's father and that this is just a ploy to keep you in her life. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Setting up the tone of betrayal and heartache, Miss Amos sheds light on the fact Mr. Johnson had been no help in raising their kids and not just baby Paris, but their first kid baby London as well. Apparently, baby London was also deprived of fatherly affection. He don't even acknowledge the fact that my baby is a possibility to be his. He acknowledge her at all, like she don't exist, period. So wait a minute, you have an older child together, London. Correct. He does stuff for that baby. A little. But he does nothing for Paris. Absolutely nothing. Following that train of thought, the baby daddy came up with his testimony. It seemed Miss Amos had trouble being in a committed relationship. The good old concept of loyalty was lost on this baby mama. I done seen text messages on her phone from other guys saying, is you coming with me again tonight? I enjoyed myself. So are you all in a relationship? Not at the moment. Now, Miss Amos, you were supposed to be in a relationship with Mr. Johnson. That's correct. You find out you're pregnant, and then what happens? You tell him? Yes, yes, ma'am. Next up, the baby mama tried to justify her promiscuous behavior by blaming the defendant. As he started it, she was just reacting to his actions, apparently. Well, the tit-for-tat game was displaying drastic consequences now. I went to the store. I had got a pregnancy test. I took the test. Uh, you know, I kind of briefly sat in the bathroom and I cried because at that moment, you know, it was kind of hard on me, you, you know, trying to deal with another child. So as I walked out the bathroom, he was laying on the couch. You know, I went up to him. I showed him the pregnancy test. He looked at me and he was like, it ain't mine, instantly. Because she's a cheater. Time to go on a long rant. The plaintiff admitted to messing around right in the middle of this court. And yet, she was firm on the belief that the defendant was her baby daddy. And he was obviously not buying that. Why are you so sure Mr. Johnson is his biological father when you are admitting in court right now that I was sleeping with somebody else three or four times a week? We had unprotected um, sex, but, you know, majority of the time we was, you know, using... A condom? Yes, ma'am. When I told Gary that I was pregnant, I was not no three, four months pregnant. The plot thickened. The other guy was still in the dark about baby Paris's existence. Wow! Miss Amos was good at keeping secrets. This was interesting since the witness she brought also just got to know about certain developments in the past. All right, so now, do you think your cousin, Mr. Johnson, is Paris's biological father? Absolutely. She looks just like his other two kids. The information that she gave today, that I would have a doubt, but you know what I'm saying? She looks just like the oh, other. Oh, you got some new info today, too. About the whole, you know, sleeping with two people around the same time that Paris was conceived. Fasten your seatbelts, people, as Baby Mama was about to take us on a wild ride. The court was in session for Baby Paris's paternity. But after hearing the witness's testimony from the defendants, uh-oh, more trouble was ahead of the baby mama then. She told me her own mouth, this is not your brother's baby. I told him he can go on. So see the thing- When did she tell you that? When she was pregnant. I don't need to hear anything else. And so that's where I was going. I was like, okay. You are not said what that. It does. I said that. And the reason why, why? I said why? that was because it was in the heat, you know, it was in the heat of the moment. We, we, don't was say that. we was arguing, we was into it. The baby mama had been quite a busy bee during both of her pregnancies, it seemed. Yup. But now, everything was out in the open, and it wasn't being received well. Most importantly, Ms. Amos' case was weakening by the second. So you were having sex with somebody else? I was. During the time you found out you were pregnant? I was. And there is a paternity question surrounding. Is it the same man you were sleeping with during the time Harris was conceived? No. It is not? No. So it's a different guy? Yes. Poor Mr. Johnson. He was clearly having a hard time. This evil deception left him speechless. Here he was having doubts over one kid, and turns out that the kid he was sure about was also doubtful. That was quite harsh. I kind of feel hurt. You say you feel hurt? Mm-hmm. They did with my baby, and I didn't feel like she was cheating at the time with London. So at that time, you really had no real clues that she was sleeping with anybody else. That's right. But your sister has been honest today, and I presume she's been honest with you. Yes. 
<laughs> Dear Lord, woman, take some pity on the baby daddy. It seemed the plaintiff didn't have a one-time thing with the other guy. Nope, it was more. And it continued till the second baby even. Mr. Johnson was definitely in a world of pain over this. When he saw her, did he say anything to the effect that he believes he may be her biological father? No, he he, he never thought that he was the father. He, he have seen a picture of Gary before. He have said, yeah, she, she looks like him. He feels like she looks like Mr. Johnson. Right. When's the last time you were intimate with that man? Maybe around two months ago. It was time to end this paternity saga of betrayal and heartache. Mr. Johnson was here for some answers, and Judge Lake had those for him. Paris and London, both babies' lives were at stake here. Here we go. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. Woo! Both of those beautiful little babies are yours. <laughs> How does that feel? I'm happy now. <laughs> <laughs> A heartfelt quest for closure that's been decades in the making. Yup, this plaintiff was tired of all the lies and this journey in search of a real father. She wanted some answers. And today, she was about to meet a man who could be her potential father. You grew up believing one man was your father until the age of 13 when he said, I am not your daddy. Yes, ma'am. Your mother then told you, and the defendant, David Dorsey, is your biological father. You are here to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. A stunning deathbed confession led Miss Hannon on a quest of a lifetime. She had heard of Mr. Dorsey in the past, but had never laid eyes on him until now. All this time, she believed another to be her father but he shut that down cruelly. We have our heart to hearts. You know, when she got sick, she was sick my whole entire life. You know, she would be talking about Kimball, she would talk about David. On her deathbed, she told me, I thought I picked the right one for you, but David's your father. So just before your mother passed, she says to you, I thought I picked the right one for you, but David Dorsey is really your biological father. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dorsey graced the court with his presence, finally. However, he walked right past the potential daughter without a second glance, and that didn't go unnoticed. Yep, the judge saw it, but what he revealed next took the cake in being one of the most shocking revelations. This young woman has waited many, many years to meet you. She's been told that you are her biological father. You didn't even really look at her, acknowledge her. I acknowledged her, I looked at her. You don't believe you're her biological father? Not really. Why? Because I don't remember her mother at all. You don't remember her mother. I don't know her mother. Let's take a minute to soak in the sheer, unadulterated bizarrity of the situation. I mean, seriously. Mr. Dorsey denied having any contact with Miss Veronica ever, even after the witness from the plaintiff's side recognized him. Yeah, he still held his ground. What information can you provide today? Me and Fallon's mother, Veronica, we work together and I have seen him come to the job to bring her mom lunch. Her mom would talk about her baby daddy being David. He still looks the same, but he had just got a little um, heavier. Well, folks, if you thought that was the end of it, you're sorely mistaken. Mr. Dorsey had a different last name in the past. And no, he didn't reveal that information. The godmother did that, but he accepted that chunk of information. And yet, he still maintained he didn't know the baby mama. Oh my God, the level of denial here. This it was is David, David Dorsey, you said David Watkins. It was a David Watkins. My name Watkins. used to be David Watkins. I was adopted and he changed my name to Watkins. And then when I got grown, I changed my name back to my dad's name. I mean, I was well known in the North End. I mean, everybody knew my name. So what are you thinking? You thinking this woman just made this up? I don't know this woman. Next up, we get to hear from Mr. Dorsey's daughter. And the moment she entered, she made a beeline for the plaintiff and hugged her. It was a beautiful moment, made even more when she immediately testified she was there to bring her sister home. Furthermore, she revealed the true character of her father's dearest and his days in the past. I love you too. That's my sister. I don't mean to disrespect my dad, but my dad was a Rolling Stone. Went on to Facebook, you know, and I looked up her name. And when I seen her face, I was like, if that's not me, uh, maybe about a good 50 pounds ago. <laughs> I mean. Poor Miss Hannon was truly torn over all this. On one side, she had a woman claiming her as her sister. 
while on the other side, a potential father was playing the Never Have I Ever game on expert mode. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? You never met this woman and you have never had sex with her? Why did you come? I want closure for Fallon. And I see that makes you emotional when you talk about her. Why is that? I feel sorry for her. I feel one kind of way, but then I feel bad. I missed out on her life if I am her father. The moment of truth was here. It was time to cut through the drama and get to the envelope that held the facts. We're about to lay down the verdict that'll either grant our plaintiff the closure she's been craving or leave us all scratching our heads in disbelief. Here we go. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Dorsey, you are not the father. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are my sister. Valentine doesn't matter to me.